And you can't much see the difference in the hoof shape of this, but you can probably see that this had a really nasty wire cut injury. Quite unusual for a thoroughbred, because in, in Europe they're usually kept in close to the rail, so they don't get them. They're about the one breed that doesn't. This one did have. Uh, you can see how lightly it's shod. Um, if we look here with the shoe off and the foot tied up, you can see it's actually got only a three-quarter hoop. Uh, this whole point is not generating uh, anywhere near um, organized uh, good hoof form. So injury can cause uh, hoof shape change. Finally, looking at this, um, I photographed this mare on one of the stud farms I do for no other reason that Look how steep she is for a thoroughbred. I've been talking about hoof angle. She was, had the steepest pair of feet. And uh, so that's really unusual. And so I had some photographs for other lectures. Uh, last year we looked at her, and this hoof shape would start to change. Only in this foot. You can't see the other side, but you will in a minute. So September last year, this is the hoof shape. And you can probably guess what's going on to a certain extent. So this is it last month. Uh, so we are extraordinarily worried. Uh, she has just foaled, and there's a discussion with the owners about what we should think about her going and fold again. Uh, the good news is that she has three good feet, and of course, a lot of laminitics. Um, you know, it's both front or all four, and then that's a, a real problem. So this is a very unusual case, and I cannot tell you what's going on. I can't tell you why. Uh, one foot has stayed fairly <coughs> upright. So this is a pretty healthy thoroughbred foot for, for an 18 year old. And this is what's going on this side. And we have no record of injury, illness, anything. So it's a bit of a mystery, but I just wanted to show that because that's uh, uh, by uh, extraordinary chance I started photographing this nearly two years ago, and we didn't know this is what was going to happen. Uh, so, so from the point of view of this um, lecture, it fits right in, even if I can't give you an answer as to what's going on. Um, but it does highlight the fact that it, hoof shape, even in an old horse, hoof shape change can be quite dramatic. I hope not always in this manner. So in summary, uh, we looked at anatomy and physiology, and I talked a lot about hoof growth, and remember what I said is that the important thing to remember is that new discovery that hoof compresses as it grows down. And if you think and look at a lot of hoof shapes, uh, and especially those that we know are detrimental to the horse, and I should have said early on that again, scientifically, misshaped hooves have been easily um, uh, collated with, uh, with lameness. Of course, again, there is a chicken and egg argument there. And we looked at the anatomy um, as well. So there were developmental changes which are not harmful. There are those changes that that foal and that young horse undergoes just because it is developing. But quite dramatic changes in hoof angle and hoof shape that it's going through at that age. Uh, and of course, we also um, looked at both uh, breed and environmental differences and I was only able in the space of this lecture to uh, give you those couple of examples um, but I'm sure we're aware because most of the show a variety of breeds that there is breed differences but we need to think about environmental changes as well to be shown. And there's confirmation of causes and that includes those acquired uh, deformities because it is as follows for confirmation that's affecting the hoof shape. I should have said to you as well early on that one of my interests, of course, my business, and me personally, I earn my money tripping foals. But the great thing about foals is that everything's exaggerated. And you often learn things in principle in exaggeration. And then you have to look for things more subtly and a, a more finesse uh, different. So you can learn a lot from foals because they have such uh, distorted at times uh, confirmations. And finally, at the end, we looked at how disease and injury um, can change the hoof capsule and the hoof shape. So that was quite a long list that we went through, a lot of different reasons, and I don't know, you might think of a, 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 an effect on hoof shape 
uh, that I hadn't thought to mention. But that was a long enough list. Uh, tomorrow what I'm going to do uh, is look at some of these, um, and certainly these two uh, cases, and say, what is a barrier can we do? Is it, can we, um, can we undo some of these changes? Can we stop some of these changes? Should we be trying to? So tomorrow's lecture, which is the Jim Lindsay lecture, which I'm very much looking forward to uh, giving, uh, is, is really the second half of this lecture. Uh, so I hope to see you all there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.